Welcome to Black Boss, where we highlight and celebrate Black entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Michelle Forbes, and today I have with me um, artist based, or Philly artist based uh, extraordinaire, really. You had to have seen his work, beautiful work, fantastic work, very representative of the culture, Mr. Chuck Styles. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your on your platform, you know, talking black excellence, talking, yes. you know, empowerment. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Let us say making making the time. I know you're a busy man. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, the pleasure is all mine. Yeah. So how did you begin your entrepreneurial journey and how long have you been doing it? Um. Well, I think I think I've always had um, a sense of an entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial spirit since I was like a kid. Mm -hmm. um, shoot, I was wanting to make you know money sweeping up um, you know hair inside of my uncle's barbershop when I was like twelve, you know, thirteen years old. Um, and ironically, because my uncle owned a barbershop, that led me into um, my first professional career, which was a barber. Um, you know, I worked at Strawbridge's, uh, which is, you know, for, for those of y'all that's too young to understand yeah, right. what Strawbridge's is, you know, it, it was like, it was like Macy's. Um, yeah, it's a department store. Right, right out of high school, suit and tie, working in the China department for $6 an hour. Wow. Um, and I, and that wasn't, I mean, I did my job. I was like one of the top sellers, but um, at the same time, I also applied to um to work inside of a local barbershop in my neighborhood without being licensed without having any clientele i just you know i just took a, a, a step of faith and said you know what i'm good at cutting hair i would like to be a barber let me see if they'll hire me and i got i got a test run um one weekend at the barbershop and made more money within that weekend that i made a whole week working at strawbridge's wow. and um after that, I uh, I put in my two weeks yeah. um, from Starbridge's, and I never I never looked back. I never looked back. So um, my journey uh, in the barber industry as a barber for ten years has kind of groomed me. My customer service skills, how to market myself, how to you know just you know kind of go out and make a path for yourself. Um, that gave me the tools that I needed to pursue my art career, which I am in now. Um, but art I've been doing since I was a kid, about three years old. And so um, uh, at the age of 30, I'm 35 right now, about to be 36 in June. At the age of 30, I left um, the barber industry and have been a full-time artist ever since. Wow. Okay. Awesome. I had um, uh, Mr. Carl Morris on here yesterday. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. my guy. That's family. Yeah, he, he definitely mentioned you. Um, you know, it was one of his most memorable events. He he shouted you out. And I was like, oh, I'll be with him later in the week. Oh. So it, was, it was cool. So yeah. he wanted to shout yeah. you out. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out, Carl, Carl Fonts. You know, <laughs> Mr. Carl is, is what a lot of people in the neighborhood know him. Funny, funny enough, how how you know that our our stories um, you know, just align. Mm -hmm. While I was working at the barbershop on 52nd Street. Mm -hmm. his gallery opened up down the street and okay. um and it just was like oh wow it's a black owned art gallery on 52nd i got it and mm -hmm. i made it i made it my mission i was like i gotta get to know the owner i want i mm. want to get in there and every mm -hmm. day carl was never there you know what i mean <laughs> busy guy i love him to death but yeah, but you know I, I understand it's it's a lot it's a lot to you know um start a new business and you got so many a family and things like that i at the time didn't understand what his life um how involved this life was but I made it a mission like I'm gonna show up every single day make sure mm -hmm. I meet the owner and ever since then uh Urban Art Gallery was the first was the first gallery that I've done, done a solo art show at mm -hmm. um they've been very um they've been very supportive of my art career and they've actually helped me transition um from barbering to full-time artists so shout out to Urban Art Gallery and uh and Carl Morris absolutely that's awesome very awesome. So I know um, in in art, it can be uh, difficult to, I guess, come up with a, a consistent style that you can call your own. How are you able to go about um, doing that? Because I feel like now when you see a photo or a, um, a picture of yours, it stands out as yours. 
Mm. That's a good question. Um, sometimes it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of trial and error. Um, you know, just trying to find your voice um, in anything that you do. Um, you, you, you have, first of all, you have to open your mind up to um, other experiences outside of what your, your, your day to day is, what your normal environment produces, you know, sometimes it, it, sometimes finding your voice might take, you know, you going to a different city, experiencing different food, experiencing different music, you know, really learning who you are outside of, you know, what you've been brought up in. And then once you kind of find out your, your you know, your, your likes and your loves and your passions, you know, that you know, go beyond what you've been accustomed to, then you kind of start to find out, you know, those little small nuances that you can apply in, in all aspects of your life. And so I found that um, just finding certain colors that mm -hmm. resonated with my spirit, resonated with the, the type of music that I listen to, the brush strokes, the energy and things like that, you know, it, it, it's all it's all indicative of just like my my love for whatever music I like, whatever movies I like, you know, very small nuances of things. And then the second part is consistency is key. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've done well with, you know, establishing my style is because, you know, no matter what, I make sure that I'm consistent in certain colors, certain brush strokes, certain patterns. Mm -hmm. And that consistency is what allows people to say, oh, I know that that's a Chuck Styles piece because mm -hmm. it's been ingrained in their mind over, you know, days, months, years of just training people to see, like, when you see this, that's going to be my stamp. So, right. you know, just fi finding, 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 you know, who you are, you know, that, that quiet, that quiet time to yourself mm -hmm. and then using, using, using that knowledge to just be consistent at, at what you, what you put out. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Kind of amplify the inside and bring it outside. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You need so you need some exposure to different things and get that inspiration oh. to, to oh, find yeah. your voice outside. Yeah. yeah, it's important. Absolutely. It's important. It's important. Yeah, absolutely. So um, your art is centered around different aspects of black culture. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you seek to communicate through your art? Well, one thing, one thing that, that really uh, struck me when I started getting heavy into the art world mm -hmm. is, how, um, is how absent, you know, Black artists are in the, in, the, in, the, in the larger, bigger picture of, you know, the art industry. You know, mm -hmm. when you talk about, you know, Sotheby's and Christie's, you know, these auction houses that sell artwork for millions of dollars, you know, a lot of, you know, our people aren't. There, we are in those conversations. Um, mm -hmm. At one point, while trying to find my voice, um, I was doing a lot of artwork that was catering to a specific audience. Um, that audience was not, you know, reflective of my audience. And so, um, once I started to say, you know what, I need to, I need to do art for, you know, not not only for my community, but first of all for my family. Um, and I'm a father of, of three daughters. I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a nephew, and I just wanted to start creating art that, you know, when I pass away, my legacy, can they be, can they be proud to stand behind the art that I left them to, mm -hmm. you know, sell? And, 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 it, and it needed to reflect that. It needed to reflect who I am, um, needed to reflect who my kids were, my wife was, my mom was, my father was, it, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's, where, that's where my passion and my mission uh, came from with just highlighting black culture, all the vastness of our dopeness. Um, you know whether it's whether it's taking some of our you know our music black um, black American icons and dressing them up in African garbs to bridge that culture. Um, you know, or if it's you know kind of just you know the the, the fun things like. Um, like taking Thanos from Marvel and putting him in our backdrop of Boys in the Hood, you know, right. it's, it's it's all it's all just to kind of like highlight, you know, how 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 great we are. So, yeah, yeah that that's such a um a beautiful sentiment about your about your family and something reflective of them that they can stand behind. That I don't know, I just didn't think that would be the answer, but that was. Like, <laughs> 
was like a really beautiful, heartfelt answer. Like it's something that makes total sense. I mean, it's reflective of them. It's something that, you know, they can look to to feel empowered. They can, you know, yeah. see themselves and for that to be a part of your legacy and something that you, you know, really considered as being part of your legacy of the art that you've created. Yeah, that's a beautiful sentiment, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so how were you able to make a, a transition? Well, from being an entrepreneur, I know you said that you made a transition from um, barbering. What made you fully hop into the art world? Well, the funny thing is, I never, I never saw myself, I never saw myself retiring as a barber. Even while I was barbering, and even while I was, you know, very successful as a barber, it was one of those things where, you know, I kind of like looked into the future and said. I can't be 60 years old, still trying to, you know, be the sharpest, the sharpest barber cutting, you know, the, the new generation. Okay. You know, I, I had to figure out, um, you know, how I was going to, you know, um, segue into the art. And so while I was a barber, I started doing a lot of artwork that was specifically barber um, related. And at the trade shows, while everybody was selling hair products and barber products i was the only vendor that was there selling artwork wow so, so yeah, you stayed yeah. in space to sell art yes wow yes. Okay. so a lot of so a lot of barbers you know they saw me you know do a competition one minute and mm -hmm. then you know uh leave the stage and go to my booth and sell artwork and okay. so that kind of just you know that, that that prepared me for the art world um you know selling prints selling originals having stage presence, having vendor presence and things like that. Um, making that transition at the age of 30, it wasn't easy. Um, mm -hmm. My secret, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie, my wife. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think I would have been able to do it uh, if I wouldn't have had a, a very supportive partner because yeah. it, it got, it got dark. It got dark, mm -hmm. you know, from consistently making money on a weekly right. basis, on a daily basis, to saying like, Oh shit, how am I gonna, you know what I mean? How am I gonna pay these bills? You know what I mean? And so um I was just thankful that I was able to have, you know, my wife, a partner that was able to like trust my vision and, and allow me to, you know, ride the storms out so that we could, you know, see brighter days and, and yeah. thank God we we were here, you know. Um and it is it was worth every bit of, you know what I mean, um unsure times, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you can make it through those and then fine tune, you know, the fine tune the strategy, fine tune, you know, your your, your methods um, mm -hmm. for better business practices, better marketing practices, strengthen your skills. I mean, it, it, it's worth it, you know. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> my next question, I feel like you kind of you kind of answered it unless you had. <laughs> another answer to it um what has been the most difficult aspect of being a creative entrepreneur and how have you overcome the difficulty oh well i mean probably one of the different probably one of the most difficult <laughs> difficult parts is is balancing it all yeah it's just balancing it all um it's it's hard it's hard for other people to understand i mean even even you know my wife um supportive as she is it's hard for people that don't that don't have this occupation, um, a creative occupation, to understand mm -hmm. that like the hours don't mean anything. It's about it's about yeah. being locked into a certain zone where 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 the where the thought process and the work is just in a space where um, you know you're you're invincible in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, and, and usually, usually those times are what's necessary, not the hours. Cause I can work eight hours a day and feel like I didn't accomplish anything, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if an idea or inspiration hits me between the hours of like 12 o'clock and three o'clock in the morning, I gotta, I gotta go ahead and do that. Um, so just trying to find the balance of it all is, is been the most difficult part. Cause I'm very active as a dad. I, I take my kids to school, pick them up, dance, practice, gymnastics, homework, mm -hmm. everything like that. And while so many people might see the artwork online and think that I spend 24 hours, you know, 365 days in the studio, 70% um, of my day is me being a husband and a father, right. you know, 
the other the other in between parts is when I have to find those times to do artwork and even and even in those small in between times I have to find a way to like trigger that you know that in the zone moment because yeah. like I said the, the hours the hours don't mean anything it's not like I'm sitting down writing out emails no mm-hmm. I have to find like that creative like spark that's like oh shit I got it boom let me bang this out and that all yeah. that doesn't happen that doesn't happen as soon as I clock in you know so right yeah. So with, with you saying that, and um, now I'm just curious, and finding, and finding that zone, and I can't do this because it's a real thing. I know. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Say, the zone is a very real thing. Shout out um, to the movie Soul. The movie Soul movie. depicted that yes, perfectly. Perfectly. <laughs> perfectly. As soon as you said the zone, I was like, yep, you got the same thing I got. <laughs> But um, when locked into that zone, how long do you think it takes for you to complete one of your pieces? Or can you complete multiple locked into that space? Yeah, um, I work. I work pretty fast. Um, I kind of I kind of developed a, a, a very, a very, um, a very unique skill of like painting fast. Mm. Um, I used to I, I actually used to paint at the Roots Picnic when they used to be at the pier on Columbus Avenue. I used to do live okay, paintings. Yeah right at the Roots Picnic, um, multiple live paintings right there at some barber shows. So it, I kind of honed the skill of like being able to paint fast. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'll be able to do a painting probably like hour, dep- depending on how complex it is, I can yeah. do a painting in an hour. Um, if it's something a, a little bit more detailed, like I can knock it out in like three or four. Um, but what helps me get in that zone is like, I'm. I'm big on just creating my space, um, my space that 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 produces good energy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether it's like certain music that I have playing on in the background, plants, mm-hmm. certain lighting, um, the way certain furniture is arranged, I'm, I'm big on feng shui and things like mm-hmm. that. So um, I, I have to have my space um, help me conjure up that energy. So that yeah. that's a that's a big contributing factor. Um, yeah. once, once I'm, once I'm in the zone, I mean, you yeah, know, you some, 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 some events, some events, some events might happen on TV at eight o'clock at night and I'll have a piece ready by, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and the people wow. be like, wow, how do you work that fast? I'm like, I don't sleep and I was in the zone. So, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, what inspires you? Um, I saw so many things. I mean, that, that's such a layered question. Um, well, I'll, like it's, I can ask a more a more specific one. <laughs> what What inspires you to combine that combination between um, the civil rights figures and putting mm. them into um, hip into uh, hip hop scenarios or cover yeah. pictures or yeah? How do you find that that blend? Because that's one that I specifically enjoy. <laughs> Oh, look, I love it. I love it. Um, it's, 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 it goes back to that. It goes back to that, like finding your voice, you mm-hmm. know, finding pieces of you that mean a lot to you and then finding a way to make the, like the perfect recipe for it. You know, growing up, I was born in 85. You know, I love, I love rap. I love hip hop. Um, mm-hmm. I love music. And so, um, it's always it's always like ingrained in me and I don't ever want to get that lost um because yeah. it, it 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 plays so much into my style whether I'm doing the graffiti in the background of some of my mm-hmm. pieces or you know the the loud colors that look like street art mm-hmm. um and then the historical part is as I'm as I'm taking on this responsibility to you know, be a trailblazer in my community as a black artist and entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I'm also doing a lot of research on those that came before me. Mm-hmm. And, and while I'm, you know, learning so much about, you know, my own history, um, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's just like, you know what, I want, I want to pay homage, you mm-hmm. know, to, to, you know, the ones that came before me, but I don't want to do it in a way that we've seen before. Um, I want to do it in, in my Chuck Styles way, the, the way mm-hmm. the way that you know um, shows my love for hip hop, that shows my love for music, that shows my love for mm-hmm. for streetwear fashion. So 
it, so that way I can make it cool enough that the new generation, my kids and, you know, whoever their peers are or the communities around the country, they say, yo, that's a dope picture of Martin Luther King. Yeah. I want to learn more about it. Or mm-hmm. that's a dope picture of Frederick Douglass. I don't know who the other two are. Who's the other two? Because yeah. I've seen that conversation happen in my post where they know who Nelson Mandela and Frederick Douglass is, but they had no idea who Marcus Garvey is. So now they're yeah. researching Marcus Garvey. So it's just like it's like a double-edged sword. It's like yeah. I'm giving you, I'm giving you dope art, but at the same time, I'm helping you, you know, um, I'm helping other people, you know, be educated on who who these great leaders were, you know, before us. Um, right. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Thank that's you. What I'm saying. I think I think that's a very unique way of doing that because it does. I mean, it's it's undeniable that it looks cool like that. I think that's the thing about it. It's like dang, like. I know some people next to it. The brothers and people were that cool next to each other with the outcast. Like, it right, was, right. Yeah, that Thank was, you. That, that's a cool picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's a cool picture. Thank uh, you. Uh, no problem. So, what has been um, your favorite art piece and why? Um. Well, between that piece that you're talking about, the Activonia piece with Martin mm-hmm. Luther King and, and Malcolm X, that's definitely one of my favorites. And then probably one of my favorites is um, is I did a I did a piece uh, probably like in 2018. It's my two daughters. This before I had my 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 youngest one, my third daughter, but it's my two daughters um, portraits of them, and they have the Nefertiti head pieces on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably like one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and now, and now it's like, I got to redo it now. Cause I got a third daughter and I, you know yeah. what I mean? So I can't, I can't have her not left out on the, on the, on the Nefertiti headpiece, uh, uh, art piece. So that, that for sure is, you know, it's, it's personal. It's, it's personal. And, I, and that's why I love yeah. it. So. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. That sounds Thank, beautiful. You. Thank um, you. Have any of your uh, pieces caused controversy? Oh Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what's, you the, know? what's the most controversial one? Well, this is this is funny. Um, this this was done back in like I think 2016. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't really promote it much. Um, I don't want that kind of heat anymore. But <laughs> oh, oh, you um, cause real controversy. <laughs> oh. Um. So it's a, it's a, it's a famous it's a famous painting. Um. You know, and I'm pretty sure you saw it, you've seen it before with the dogs mm-hmm. playing poker. Yeah, you know, it's, yep. like a, it's like, yeah, the dogs mm-hmm. playing poker at the poker table. And so, um, before I got into like the space that I'm in now, where mm-hmm. I'm known for highlighting, you know, historical people, I did this back in like 2015 or 16, and it was mm-hmm. President Obama, Martin Luther King, and Malcolm X. I, I, I love Martin and Malcolm because it's mm-hmm. so many, it's so many different pictures of them you know what i mean so many different images it's like you got martin where he's like you know the doctor doing the speeches and then you got martin where he's like chilling you know what i mean with some sunglasses on just right you know and, and i just i just love that you know there's so many images of them and um and that's why i love painting those two figures in particularly but this painting i had them three playing poker um at the table and it was like, you know, uh, whiskey cups and, and and Hennessy bottles on the table. And uh-huh. I remember, I remember, I took that painting down to the Million Man March, I think in like 2017 or something. Okay, like fair that. Time. Yeah, and man, so many people like like ate me up, ate me up over that. Like, yeah, oh. they were like, oh man, you know, uh, brother Malcolm would never be gambling and, and drinking whiskey. And, yeah, they 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 grinded me up. Um, and it wasn't and it wasn't meant to you know stir controversy I didn't paint it to stir controversy it was just one of those like in a very human in a very human way how can I show these three gentlemen you know just being normal you know I mean not that everybody every man plays poker but you know in a very you know down to earth you know experience how can I show them like hanging out together and and yeah, at the time, at the time, yeah, I, a lot of people, a lot of people, and that's not the only one. That's not the only one. Um, it's it's a few. I I can't, I can't even remember. But I'm here for it. 
Yeah, I'm I was about to say, it. doesn't that deter you? Or you're like, no, nah, bring it on. Let's start yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Because yeah. it's like, um, you got to have a thick skin in this art mm-hmm. game, especially if you want to make some noise. Yeah. Um, if you do, if you do safe art, then, you know, it'll be good, but it won't be talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I always try to find ways uh, to get a conversation going, whether you love it, whether you hate it, whether it, it, it causes, you know, conversation for you to learn more. Um, mm-hmm. That's one of my goals is to just get you to talk about it, you know, so. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. So what have been um, your greatest wins and greatest I say uh, losses because losses for an entrepreneur are really just lessons because you got to know to pivot and, and learn, you know, learn what you don't know. So what are mm-hmm. your greatest wins and greatest lessons in entrepreneurship? Um, well, one of my greatest one of my greatest lessons um, came from 2000, 2017, was it 2016, mm-hmm. I was commissioned by a Cadillac to paint uh, an Escalade in Miami um, in front of thousands of people like live. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, I bombed. Like, you know, a lot of people liked it. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like I did my best. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got a lot of support from Revolt TV and Cadillac on social media. They like shared my process, shared the final picture. And um, at the time, I... I engaged in the Twitter um, post that Cadillac posted, which gained like 70,000 likes and Mm -hmm. thousands of comments. And the majority of comments were a lot of racial, um, you know, racially charged like hate tweets. Wow. Yeah. So, so during a weekend where that was my first time in Miami Art Basel, that was my first time having like a big, you know, um, commission project like that. I was on a high, but me, you know, paying attention to those social media comments that like sent me into um to a a, a slight period of depression, mm. you know, because I felt like I failed, and yeah. so many people were, you know, like I said, the it was racially filled, racially, you know, what I mean, charged tweets mm-hmm. like, oh, why would y'all let that, you know, that nigga, you know, destroy that car, and, and wow. it was it was heavy, it was heavy, okay, it was heavy. So that was like a, that was a, that was like my first like big introduction to, Mm -hmm. you know, having your art on a platform bigger than my own and being able Mm -hmm. to take criticism, Yeah, Um, you know, uh, cause, cause now, you know, thank God I've, I've had a lot of successful viral moments. Um, And while I do, you know, appreciate the, the praise and the, you know, and people, you know, the admiration, I, I also learned how to separate myself from getting too attached to the social media um, comments and commentary, because that that can, you know, play a, a big, a, a big role on your psyche and your, mm-hmm. your motivation and, and things like that, you know, just being an entrepreneur. Um, as far as as far as some of some of the big wins, um, I've had quite a few blessed to have quite a few. I'm currently working with tops. Um, the trading card company right now where I'm, I'm officially doing uh, 20 um, MLB, Major League Baseball players. Um, so I have my own set of cards coming out and they're doing really well right now this year. So that's yeah. a really big win that I'm celebrating right now. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I was to say, it's, it's cool how you do um, like collections of things. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, my wife is calling. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we can break from her. Okay. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just saying it, it's cool how you do, you know, collections of things. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, how you do the baseball cards or like you'll have an art series where, you know, it's a collection. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I like that style. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think it's important. I think it's important to, uh, and that's that's another that's another thing you know, when it comes to finding your voice and, you know, being consistent, mm-hmm. like if you can put, you know, um, all your aesthetics into one period, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it'll, it'll cement that period in time for people, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. I, I, I kind of look at it like, uh, like music, you know, mm-hmm. so many, 
so many, you know, musical artists, they have, they record hundreds or thousands of songs, but only, you know, 15 to 20 of those songs get put on an album. And then people remember that album for the rest of their lives, you know? So I look at my collection as like, oh, that's that album. You know, yeah. I hope you remember that album and it might be, you know, one piece that you like, or it might be all the pieces that you like, but you'll remember the album as a, as a totality, as a, as a collection. That's cool. Yeah, I never, I was to say, even, even in enjoying the collection, I never viewed it like that, but yeah, it is, it is like albums, because they all relate to each other, but they are different. It does, yeah. that moment in time. That's cool. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. So if, if uh, you knew an artist looking to become an entrepreneur, what advice would you give them? What advice would I give them? I would, the advice that I give a lot of artists is, you know, start with what you have. You know, everybody, everybody is not, you know, Basquiat or Picasso straight out the gate. Like I, I'm, this Chuck Styles that's doing this interview right now, it's not the same Chuck Styles that, you know, started. Um, mm -hmm. But you, you have to start, you know, you have to start and, and you can't be afraid to put, put, put yourself out there and show people because one thing is for certain if you are consistent you will get better um so you know why not just have people go along for the journey um and, and see you progress and and, and 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 people become fans from day one um instead of you know because a lot of artists they be like well i don't want to put it out yet because it's not ready and it's not ready and i'm not where i need to be and it's just like by the time you think you're ready you know you might have missed you know a lot of opportunities to build, you know, some good relationships, some good opportunities, and um, and for you to, you know, get those those early, you know, losses or not losses, but lessons learned, you know, because you get sharper by, you know, making mistakes. Right. You want to make those mistakes early and not late. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Get them out so, the way. Yeah, get them out the way. You know, get them out the way while you're still whack. Right. <laughs> and nobody knows who you are, you right. know, because when you when you do those fumbles and you're and you're, and you're a little higher up, then it hurts a little. It hurts a lot more. So, yeah, um, yeah just start start with what you have, with where you're at and, and, and promote, promote, promote like you are McDonald's, you know, because I tell people I tell people McDonald's doesn't apologize for how many commercials they run or how many billboards they have in your city. Yeah, you need to promote just as hard, you know, so. Yeah. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank absolutely. You, thank you for being here. I really, <laughs> really appreciate it. You know, no, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy your art and I, I always felt like, you know, you had a unique perspective on things um, just by the art that you produce. And, you know, had different questions on it. But, you know, now after after speaking to you, not only do, you know, I enjoy the art, I enjoy the person behind the art. It's oh, been, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. It's, it's truly been a pleasure um, talking to you and hearing some of the inspiration behind that and, and your thoughts and views behind your art. It's, it's been truly a pleasure. Oh, um, I know. Like, seriously, I appreciate I appreciate these conversations uh, as well. Thank you so much. Great questions, too. Thank and, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, pre I appreciate that. Um, so there's there's two things I have left for you. Uh, hopefully okay. you can do for me. First thing, please tell the people where they can find you. Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Chuck Styles. That's with two S's. And you can also visit my website, www.artofchuckstyles.com for, um, you know, all canvas prints, limited prints, uh, T-shirts and future things to come. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, last thing, Black Boss Tradition. Um, I have all Black Boss participants say their name and then say that they're Black Boss. All right. So what's up? This is Chuck Styles. You talk to a black boss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, love, I love everybody's take on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. Well, thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate you being here, um, sharing, sharing some of your time with me. And go, go enjoy. Go, oh, go no. enjoy being, a, being an artist, being a father, being a husband, all of those thank things you. You, made it, you made it clear. Thank you. Look, I see you. I see you out here too. Y'all, y'all, you and your husband, bosses. Like I salute y'all. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> nah, keep doing what y'all doing. Thank you for having me. Please keep me, keep me posted on any any future endeavors that you do. You know, Absolutely. Boss, boss, bosses, bosses recognize each other. So, you know, <laughs> appreciate, appreciate it. it. <laughs>
right. Have a good one, man. You enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much to Chuck Styles. Um, I really appreciate him being here with me today on this morning. Glad we were able to catch each other. Um, if you haven't seen his art, please check out his art. He does um, fantastic work. Um, things very representative of the culture, as you heard him say, you know, it, it was important for him to create images that his family could stand behind, uh, be proud to sell and be something representative of them and the strength in the culture. So, I mean, it doesn't get better than that in art. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know if it gets better than that in, a, in an explanation of, of why you do art. That was that was fantastic. I love that answer. Um, so thank you so much. I hope you guys were able to gain something, learn something. Um, you know, we do it for the culture. So uh, to continue the celebration of Black entrepreneurship, please check me out over on Instagram at BlackBoss underscore certified. Um, on Facebook at Black Ball Certified to see, you know, clips and everything of the Black Balls episodes. And for full episodes, you can head over to YouTube um, at Black Ball Certified. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Chuck. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. Peace. <laughs>